The chapter 1094 begins with a color spread inspired by Oda Sensei's one-shot manga monster, and there's going to be an anime adaptation coming soon. This color spread has been released to promote it. In this color spread, we can see all the members of the Shimitsuki clan, like Ryuma, Zoro, Ashimaru, Kiuna, Kazaburo, Yasui, and Kashiro. If you look closely at this color spread, in the top left corner, there's a character that everyone believes is none other than Zoro's father. Because in the SBS we saw a spiked hair character named Roranoa Arashi who is Zoro's father. In my opinion, this character might be none other than a younger version of Ryuma. What do you think about who this character might be? Share your thoughts in the comments below. So, friends before we begin the chapter, I'd really like it if you could click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Many of you watch the videos but forget to do that. Kindly support my work and help me reach 1000 subscribers by the end of this year. As we saw in the last chapter, Atlas gave new commands to the Mark III pacifists, and he explained that whoever has pacifists on their side will have more chances of winning. So, the chapter starts from there. After receiving the new commands, pacifists start attacking the marines. Fearing the pacifists, the marines run here and there to save their lives and tell each other, run away from the pacifists, everyone. After this, the scene shifts to Vegatankade, where Vegapunk, Sanji, Atlas, and Frankie are sitting. Stella told Atlas to begin searching for Bonnie. Then Frankie notices that they are all heading towards the center. If this continues, we will fall. Upon this, Vegapunk says, Don't worry, Vegatank 8 tires are made of the same cloud as the road, and this tank has a unique ability of sticking to itself, so it's difficult for us to fall. Just then, Sanji shouts that he has found Bonnie. Hearing this, Frankie asks, Where? Sanji replies confidently, My lady radar has never been wrong. We also know our simp boy Sanji Sharp Eyes never fails when it comes to ladies. Vegapunk comments, it's an unscientific radar, but I still believe in it. Sanji was happened to hear it and used his skywalk ability to descend rapidly. He said that if the Vega tank couldn't match his speedy heart, he had no issue rushing ahead of them. The scene shifts to Bonnie, where we find her battling not with ordinary marines but with a vice admiral. Because in front of Bonnie, regular marines are nothing. Here, Bonnie launches a new attack on the marines called NDE, where she fires a gun over the marines, and they hallucinate, thinking they are dying. After this, all the marines affected by this attack faint. Taking advantage of this situation, Bonnie starts to run away. Suddenly, a Mark III pacifista appears in front of her, ready to attack. Seeing this, Bonnie can't understand how this happened. Atlas had controlled all the pacifists, so how could this one pacifista was not affected by her command? That's when the old lady vice admiral, named Bluegrass, speaks to Bonnie, reassuring her not to panic. She explains that this pacifista wasn't affected by Vegapunk's new orders because she had turned it into her personal ride. The Vice Admiral had consumed the Ride Ride Devil fruit, allowing her to control whatever she rides. She even adds, Bonnie if I take you down, the influence of your powers will be removed from my subordinates. At that moment, the pacifista prepares to attack Bonnie with a laser beam. Bonnie stands her ground, as the pacifista resembles her father. While Bonnie contemplates her situation, out of nowhere savior of girls Sanji came to save Bonnie. Sanji told her that she cannot freeze up in such a critical moment. Sanji reveals that he knows Kuma is her father, and she needs to accept it. A vice admiral with the appearance of an otter attacks them with a move called Whack an Otter. Sanji easily dodges the attack and starts heading towards Vegatank. Vegapunk instructs Bonnie and Sanji to quickly come inside Vegatank 8. Our mission to save Bonnie is accomplished, and now that the pacifistas are on our side, we are leaving from here. After this, the scene shifts to the dome where a fierce battle between Kizaru and Luffy is taking place. Kizaru says to Luffy, I have a mission here, so I cannot play this game with you. Then Luffy replies, This is exactly what I want to do. But Kizaru runs away from there with the speed of light. Seeing Kizaru run, Luffy also starts running after him. After this, Luffy, Zora, Sanji, Jin, Kizaru, and Rob Lucci, all the powerful characters, feel a powerful aura on the Egghead Island. And that aura is not of anyone else, it belongs to Saint Jagarsha Saturn, and he orders the pacifistas to stop. After hearing this order, all the pacifistas stop. Seeing this, Vegapunk, Atlas, and everyone else are shocked. Atlas says that outside of Vegapunk's control, there is no one else on this egghead island can control the pacifistas, only these five can do this big task. Then in an instant a magical circle surrounded by light and flame appeared out of nowhere in the middle of the egghead island. Seeing this, even the standing marines were surprised. Stella recognizes the danger and knew that they needed to hurry back up something was coming. After this, there is an announcement from the marines that all marines, Gorosai Saint Saturn is coming to Egghead Island. It is also announced that all low-ranking marines should not directly look at Saturn. If they do, they will not be forgiven. 
we see a dark flame erupted even higher than the Vega tank. People in the Vega tank had no idea about the explosion that just happened. Atlas was surprised that one of the five elders actually came to Egghead Island. Frankie had no idea about the five elder in question who they are. Stella explained that they are the most powerful authority figures in the world. After hearing this Frankie got shocked. Vegapunk said that it didn't matter since they are getting out. Then Sanji suddenly looked down and was astonished that something was emerging from the magic circle. Upon taking closer look at the middle of circle we can see someone is standing up. And there is number 5 written inside the circle. So finally, warrior science god of science in defense has arrived. One of the lower ranking marine looked directly at him wondering that if Saint Saturn is some kind of monster. His comrade tried to hush him up because they weren't supposed to look directly at Saturn. But it was too late with the mere gleam of his eye that marine head was exploded. After that, we get a look of Saint Jagarsha Saturn awakened zone form. If we take a closer look, you'll notice that his face still looks the same. But he now has claws, a huge bull-like horn, spider legs, and a dark cloud swirling around him. His new appearance resembles a mythical creature from Japan called a yakai, and his devil fruit power might be based on the yakai mythological creature named USHIONI. Saturn make a statement that he didn't remember the last time he had come to world's surface. Bonnie shivered and wondered what that thing could possibly be. Here Sanji noticed a threat approaching from above. A beam of Lisa rushed down in their direction. The cloud road that Vega Tank was using suddenly broke, and it started to fall. It was Kizaru who shot a laser at them, but he missed and hit the road, causing it to break. That's when Luffy was able to catch up to Kizaru at last. Then Luffy flexes his bicep and tells Kizaru to hold on for a moment. Kizaru asked Luffy, aren't you tired of using that form for so long? Frankie called out his captain Luffy and let him know that they are counting on him. Luffy replied to Frankie that leave everything to him. Kizaru fired a laser beam at Luffy but he tanked the head. He rapidly spins around while preparing an attack of his own. And that attack was too quick even for Kizaru to dodge. Luffy used a new attack Gum Gum White Star. By using his enhanced arm and coated with Haki, he punched Kizaru's head, making it stretch just like he did with Kaido. During the attack, some physical stars appeared out of nowhere. Even as he was hit, Kizaru realized how powerful the attack was. After giving a devastating blow to Kizaru, finally Luffy reached his limit and being to fall. Saint Saturn looked at Luffy calling him Nika. Both Luffy and Kizaru crashed into the ground. After being exhausted Luffy is still in his gear 5. The scene shifted to where Sanji and the others were. As Cloud Road was braked which made Vegatank to fall and Vegatank broke apart as all the people inside fell out. And even worse, they all fell right in front of the oversized Saint Saturn. Frankie immediately made sure Stella was okay. While Sanji was standing still carrying Bonnie in his arm and called out for Atlas if she is alright. Atlas responded that she is fine. Stella assumed the person standing in front of them to be Saint Saturn. Saturn confirmed own presence and recognized that Vegapunk has managed to cling to life. When Bonnie saw Saturn, she felt furious because she remembered Kuma's past memories. These memories had changed her focus from wanting revenge on Vegapunk to holding a grudge against someone else. So, Bonnie jumped out of Sanji's arms, grabbed a nearby sword, and leaped high into the air. In her memory, Saint Saturn had ordered the complete erasure of Kuma's identity so that no trace of him would be left. Bonnie then stabbed the sword into his chest. And that's where the chapter ends. This chapter was absolutely mind-blowing. And for us, it's good news for us that there is no break next week. And Oda Sensei didn't let us cliffhanger like this. That's for the today video. See you guys in the next video.